All right, so here's a short video about the Creality K1's breakout board. You can see um, we got a couple chips on here. Looks like there's the accelerometer. Not sure what this thing over here is. Maybe it's like a voltage regulator or something, or a USB communications or CAN bus or something. Not entirely sure. Um, right here looks like a trinamic stepper driver. And here's the ARM processor, so that's just like a little chip for the tool head. And right here, this is where the CAN bus plugs in, so just those four pins provides all the power and ground and data lines. So pretty neat little board here. Um, it's got uh, basically two boards sandwiched together like this. And if you look at this board on the back side, it's got a hole in the middle and this fan goes on just like this and it pulls air through that hole which provides some cooling action to all of these chips on this frontal board and just kind of draws air in through all these gaps along the sides so pretty cool there and then that gets attached to this heat sink so this all is kind of sandwiched together like this this, this heat sink looks like it has quite a bit of surface area on it, so it should provide pretty decent cooling. I wonder if it's enough, though, given that it's going to be operating inside of a uh, heated chamber. Well, not a heated chamber, but, you know, passively heated, and it's going to get kind of warm in there. I had to take six screws out to pull this heat sink off, so this heat sink is, like, really well secured into the hot end. Um, and... After I loosened up the scrub screw, I think I can just pull this out so we can take a look at the heat break that's being used here. Let's just pull that out. We got some thermal paste on there. That's probably just your typical thermal paste that's used on a, uh, a CPU heat sink or something. And it looks like we got a bimetallic heat break. I'm not entirely sure. This could just be a, a single piece machined heat break. It's too hard to tell on the camera here. I'll take a look at it by eye, and yeah, I can't, I can't really tell. Um, but we've got a circular heating element, a circular ceramic heating element with, uh, it looks like a thermistor kind of stuck in down here at the bottom. That thermistor is probably inside of this brass piece, so it'll get a decent temperature reading right inside the hot end, right next to the nozzle. And the length of this hot end it kind of looks like it's one of those half volcano sized nozzles. It's a little bit shorter than, uh, than a full volcano, but it's longer than a standard nozzle. So um, that has also been seen on the, uh, let's see, it's also used on the Ender 5 S1. So any nozzles that are compatible with that will probably be compatible with this. But in my opinion, it would be fine to just remove this and replace it with a volcano nozzle. You'll have a little bit of extra nozzle length, but since the K1 is using the nozzle contact to probe the bed, it should automatically compensate for that additional nozzle length. And the, uh, the part cooling fan on that thing is super overkill. So even though the uh, nozzle will be sticking out a little bit further, I think it should work just fine. Um, also related to the hot end in the nozzle, this is the heat sock or the silicone sock that goes on there. It fits on really tightly, so it's actually quite difficult to remove because of these little ears up at the top that wrap around this little metal piece. And I think Slice's patent is not being violated here because um, they're just using two screws. They're not using any spacers. So there's two screws coming up through these little uh, flange holes there and there and then that's kind of pushing this up into that heat sink but uh yeah this this little heat break is carrying the compressive load from that installation and yep this is all stuff we've probably this is all stuff you've probably seen before um looks pretty neat this is a 2.4 watt fan, so pretty powerful fan in here, probably because it's working in such a constrained area and it needs to cool that thing off with, uh, you know, it's just blowing straight up against this. 
So, um, it's interestingly enough, they've got some PTFE tubes inside of here. Not sure why they decided to add those, but um, maybe that adds just a little bit of compliance into the assembly that helps it go together better. Pretty neat little heat sink assembly. It's got some fins on the back side, but I don't think those are actually doing much cooling. And there's your grub screw. So pretty neat little assembly here. I don't know, what do you think about it? It looks like a really small, compact and integrated package. I mean, just this PCB stack alone is the size of like a normal hot end fan, a 40 by 40 fan. It's maybe 45 millimeters by 50 millimeters, but it's a very small and compact unit. Um, so yeah, that's all there is to see there. I hope you enjoyed this look into the hot end of the Creality K1. Thanks for watching and tune in for the next episode where I'll be doing more testing on this printer.